Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. It's the first one of 2020. Uh, so welcome back. I hope you had great holidays. Today on the show, we have Zach Leatherman. Um, Zach, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm I'm doing well. How was your holiday? I was great. I completely flooded my bathroom, so it's uh, <laughs> just a great, great end to 2019. I, I, I think that's uh, that's how, you know, that's how I always want to go out of the year is like with a good mopping story. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So for those of us who aren't familiar with your work, do you want to give us a little bit of a background on kind of who you are, what you do, what you're into, all that fun stuff? Sure. So I am a front of the front end web developer. Uh, I work for Filament Group and we are a consultancy that uh, works with companies to do front-end performance consulting and web development consulting. Um, we sort of work with you to make sites that work for everybody. So um, sites that work across a broad range of devices and network experiences. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, we've got a couple first-timers in the chat today, people excited for Eleventy. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what Eleventy is. Uh, let me click over to the website. So uh, I'll just I, I'll tell you what eleven D is because I as as I understood it I'm teaching you eleven D today. <laughs> so, so it says eleven yeah, D is a, a simpler static site generator. Um, so what does that mean? Like what what's the story behind eleven D and and how did it kind of come into existence? Yeah, so I'm kind of like um, I was a big fan of Jekyll back in the day, and I built like a ton of sites with Jekyll and. Jekyll is a great tool that's uh, available. You can use to build sites. And um, I kind of wanted something that was similar to Jekyll in Node. And so that was sort of the impetus for uh, 11D's beginning. Um, and so I rewrote um, my blog using this tool, 11D. Um, and I've basically been building a bunch of sites using this tool since it started. I think it's probably two years ago. Uh, yeah, we had our two, our second birthday uh, in November, so it's been around for a while. It's it's uh it's I want it to be more like a more like a, a utility than a framework, I guess I would say. Mm. Uh, it's very it's very like its main core is that it just it takes templates and outputs HTML. So I want that pipeline to be very obvious and very easy to use. Um, and I want that sort of to be the core focus of the of the generator. Um, so, yeah, we kind of uh, have a bunch of different templating languages. That's kind of like one of our strengths. People really like that, the flexibility when it comes to templating languages. Um, and I've had a lot of feedback that it's uh, very easy to get started with. So hopefully that's true today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this this quick start looks impressive. I. I'm always a fan of like, hey, let's run three lines of of three commands and you get a website. Uh, yeah, so and you can actually do it. You technically you can do it in two commands, but it isn't quite as nice because <laughs> um, you can do an npx. You can just run it directly from npx. Uh, and I don't know how familiar everyone is with um, npm and npx, but npx is a tool that you can just runtime install things, and it will use them without sort of installing them locally. Um, so, so I, you can actually, uh, yeah, let's, let's do that. So I'm just going to run through this cause it's, it seems fun. Let's do the, let's do the quick start. So All right, cool. I'm going to, um, yarn global add 11 D 11 D and then, now we get a live test to see if this works with yarn. Oh, I, oh, I didn't even think about that. Hello? Who is it? Sorry, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. I got you. I'm just too No, I can can you hear me? Oh no, we broke the we broke the speakers. But can you hear us now? <laughs> the phone took over the headphones. Okay, so this is gonna be eleven D on hard mode while he works out his uh his mic again. Um, so I am going to just continue following this. We're going to do um, Zach, can you hear us? Into readme.md. 
And then I'm gonna run eleven T. All right, are we good now? I can hear you now. Can can you hear us? I can hear you. There's a slight okay. echo, but <laughs> we're back. Um, yeah. So now we have. We did a thing. We built. We built that. All right. And so now I can serve it. Eleven D. Serve. Yep, and that uses uh, browser sync. Creates a browser sync instance. And then you can so yeah, gonna just go command to click. Read me. Hey, it works. Um, hey. So that's fun. I mean, that's that's all right. So are we done? Is that that's it? We go home now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Pack Let's it up, everybody. Home. Um. No. The, I mean, this is super cool. Like that's a that is a really nice on ramp. Yeah. So basically, the the thing that m might be different that people aren't really used to when it comes to 11 or things that might be non-traditional is that we basically look for any markdown file in any directory inside of this folder mm -hmm. and we'll output it using the same folder structure. So if you had like a deeply nested markdown file four directories deep in there, uh, we would still find that and output it with the same folder structure. Nice. So it just, output, yeah. And the output's a little bit different in that we use, we try to use clean URLs whenever possible. Um, so we make a folder for, uh, with the sort of file slug, and we make mm -hmm. an index HTML inside of that. Um, so you can have clean URLs <clears throat> in the output without having to do any extra work or any web server configuration. Nice. And so um, if I want to, Let's see. Let's let's make up a project. Like, what's a what's a fun project to kind of show how to get into, get a little bit deeper into into eleven D. Um, yeah. We, so we have. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was I was going to start spitballing. What do you What do you think? Oh, so there is an eleven D uh, base blog project that we have that you can use as a template. Okay. To sort of get started, um, and that sort of gives you um, like a larger code base to start from than just like making everything manually. Um, so if you go to, if you click the just giant logo at the top, that will actually take you to the docs. Okay. I don't know, it's the easiest one. And then on the left, there'll be starter projects, sort of like the fifth one down from the top, all the way to the top. Oh, you know, here, sorry. sorry. I was looking projects. for a heading. <laughs> and so number one, yeah, number one is 11D base blog. Okay. Um, you can just click through that. And if you clone this template project, you can get like all this starter stuff. Okay. Um, sort of set up for you automatically. Um, so, but I, I think so. I think that's awesome. Um, one thing that I like to do, just to because it, it's how I process stuff, is to kind of roll something that's less good, but that's completely from scratch, to try to get sure. my head around how all the pieces fit. Because I'm seeing stuff in here like, yeah. there's this it, it looks like a specialty folder. There's you know these sorts of things look uh, look fancy pants, and I see some is that Nunjax? Yep, nunjux templates. Yeah. Um, and so, it, I like I don't know if you're up for it, but it I think it might be kind of fun to think about like, can we build sort of a base implementation of this that that maybe doesn't have all the features, but that shows how all of these pieces work? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. All right, let's let's do it. Um, so if I want to so do that, where would you want to start? Yeah. So I would say the first thing that you'd want to do is probably make uh, two blog posts. Okay. And so, does it matter how I do this, or can I just like make up my structure? You can put them up. Let's just let's do it however you want to do it, and if it and if it works, then it's good for eleven D. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there shouldn't be any prescriptions here. Oops. Post two, and the reason that I do it like this is because sometimes I want to have like, oops. Um, like my images kind of co-located with my posts. Um, sure. And let's pull in, I feel like I had, oh, this was a fun thing. Um, we'll just pull this one in. And so this was a fun little sticker that might, a... might come out of the Party Corgi Discord, which uh, if you are, let's see. there you go. 
Party Corgi. I'm, uh, I'm that's not a, familiar with Party Corgi, but all right, we'll do it. It's a yeah, it's a it's a Discord group that a lot of content creators and uh, and live streamers <laughs> and folks who like watching live streams hang out in. It's uh it's kind of Christmas oh, parties nice. uh, project, but spend a lot of time there. So it's a it's a fun thing to do. But so let's start with our our first thing. I'm gonna give it a title. We'll call it uh, Post One, and then I'm gonna say like, what up. Um, and then we'll say this one, I want a title, and we'll say Corgis, uh, and then I'm going to use that image. And it will say, let's see, images, do the thing, dot JPEG. Okay, so I have two images. Hey, thank you for the subscription, JR Gold. Um, all right, I've got two posts. One of them is is using an image, and I think, I think is there anything that I need to do? Any any specialty stuff? That, yeah, let's well let's rerun it again and see what happens. I like this. All right, eleven D. Okay, it did so, did things. Got a blog. It did a thing. Post one. It made two index. HTML files. Transformed your markdown, but we lost the our thing. Image. It didn't right. The thing that it doesn't do by default is it doesn't copy uh, unrecognized file extensions. Okay. And so anything that's not a template is classified as like an unrecognized file extension. So the way that you can uh, add, you can tell it to copy additional file extensions that are not recognized as templates is that you can pass that into uh, formats on the command line. So if you go back to the command line. And you say 11 dash dash formats equals MD comma, uh, what is it, J, JPG. I'll try that. Cool. OK, so now if I run 11 serve. Well, you'll still need uh, that formats flag. Oh, oh, like this is like a live thing. It's not just serving the, the site files. Got it. Uh, correct, yeah. OK, so formats was MD and JPEG. Well, I mean, that might have worked because 11 e doesn't blow away your site folder when it builds. Um, but you'll get uh, you'll get out of sync there. OK, so we've got post, wow, post 1. I think it's going to be blog slash post 1. Good call. There we go. We've got our images working. Um, we have. Our blog posts are doing what we want, so that's that's pretty awesome. Um, and so yeah. I notice it didn't choke on my my markdown front matter, but it also didn't use it. And I I mean, how could it? We didn't tell it how. Um, so I feel uh, go like back. go here. Yeah, where is it using the front matter? So I, I gave the post title, but I didn't tell. Okay. I mean, we obviously didn't tell it how to use that. Um, sure. But it didn't like complain or choke or anything, so that's awesome. Um, so if I want to use this, I think yeah, so I, I have a guess. I'm guessing that we're about to write a template. Uh, you already have a template. I do. This is technically already a template. Um, so by default, coming from Jekyll, uh, the default 11D so 11D treats all Markdown files as liquid. They pre-process them with liquid. Um, and you can change the global default to be whatever templating language you want. Um, but that's just the default that we have set. So if you want to use um, liquid syntax inside of your Markdown, you can do so. So if you do uh, curly, 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 two curly brackets or whatever. Like this? And then title. Yep. That will what? use your data. Come on. And I'm still serving, so is it going to auto reload? Yeah, it should. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, well, that so, was awesome. Yeah, so it does that uh, by default for you. Um, and I think maybe the next step we should, t or did you have any more questions about that? Well, I mean, this, yeah, so this is, uh, this is pretty awesome. And you said this is using liquid? 
Yeah. So you can change it. You have to make a configuration file to change the default uh -huh. um, templating language that's used here. But, um, and we can do that now if you want, since we'll probably have to make a configuration file at some point. Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I have a strong preference about it, but let's, let's play and we can decide. Okay. So yeah, make a new file. Um, the default file we look for is .11d.js. Like this? Uh, no, sorry, spelled out. E-L, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's very confusing when we switch between <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> numbers and names. But Okay, so I have a, a .11d.js. Yeah, so um, basically what this does, is it looks for module exports that has the configuration stuff inside of it. So we'll do module.exports equals... Um, yep, and then let's see, what is it? What's the configuration thing? I have to look it up. Let's see, we'll dig into so if we go. Yeah, there's a configuration section on the left there. It's another one. Yep, or else, yeah, right there. Configuration. Okay. So we'll yep, click here. that. And then scroll down a little bit, and there'll be uh, something about a global markdown. Default template engine for markdown files. Yep, right there. Template engine. And so there's a name. so there's a sample config file right there um, that you oh, could copy. Cool. No, go go back. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'm like off on my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a default um, yeah config file you can just copy and paste there. That will okay. give you that. So we'll drop this in here, and then we can make it. I don't actually know how to write nunjucks. Um, so they're very similar, which is kind of confusing to some people, but it's there's no changes to this syntax. No changes. Okay. So yeah. that works. I've do I need to stop and restart to pick up the, the config? Oh yeah. Maybe. That's a good question. Let's try. I think there's a bug depending on what platform you're using right now. Okay, so same same thing, still works. Um, I'm gonna let me make this a little bit easier to follow here. So I've got this. And it looks like it it says it's reloading. I don't have browser sync installed. Do I need to do that? No, that should be bundled automatically. Might not be hot rolling. Oh, I know what the problem. I know what the problem is. This is a yeah. This is a very common thing that happens to us, and that browser sync requires a body tag. So let's yeah, let's go through and and work through fixing that problem. And we have that listed on our like right on the getting started guide, but it still trips some people up, including me, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we can uh, let me make this a little bit smaller. There we go. That so what what we should do to fix that is make a layout file that we can reuse across both of these okay uh, templates. So what we'll do to do that is um, we'll make another folder at the root called underscore includes. And again, this is uh, these folders are uh, you can change the name of them in your configuration file if you don't like this default names. I'm just giving you the default names so it's picked up without making any configuration changes. Um, and then we'll do just make another template inside of there called layout. We could do liquid or nunjucks, whatever you want. We could do markdown too, but mm, doesn't really work very good for top level HTML. Yeah, let's let's do let's do liquid because that's the default, yeah. right? Yeah, liquid's okay. a little bit easier too. And is it? It's was it just called layout? Layout. You can make it whatever you want. You pick the file name dot liquid. Okay. Yeah, like that it shows go. the Shopify yeah. logo. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so to. I don't think I have syntax highlighting for that, but we'll make that work. To um, make a template, use a. Oh yeah, yeah. Put some default HTML in there. Insert snippet. I have somewhere in here. I have this. Um, what is it like? How much well, of this like can I write type. from memory? Um, no, it's doc type. Delete that. All right, I'm already yeah. I'm already wrong. No, you are you are right. You just HTML. left out. And then, and then HTML. Yep. Q. 
Okay. And then you want a body tag. Body, and then we need to drop in something. Yeah, and so then, yep, and inside of this, we just look for content. Okay. And so kind of the neat thing about um, 11D layouts is that it doesn't matter what format you use for a layout. They're sort of templating language independent. So if your template uses Nunjux, you can use a liquid layout with that, or you can mix and match them however you want. Okay, interesting. Um, All right, and so, so now, did that work? No, it isn't applied to the template yet. Oh, right. You need to tell the template to use the layout. So to do that, we'll open up the template. No, we'll, the easiest way to do it is just open up the template file. Here. So index.md. Here, here. Yep, yep. And then uh, in your front matter, just say layout colon uh, layout dot liquid. And so you just you just know that like if the front matter includes a layout, you will set that. Right. Yeah, and it's set on a per template basis. So, um, and I'll show you how to make this better in a little bit. So you so technically you have to add this to both um, templates post one and post two. But it is hot reloading now, which is great. Yeah. So yeah, so we we by adding this body tag, we we got the hot reloading working. Um, yep. So I need to add this to my other template. And so that's I mean that's fine, but it sounds like you've got a way to make that easier. Yeah. So. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can set data uh, in 11T. Uh, and we have something called a data cascade that kind of sort of combines all of the data together at runtime. Um, and front matter is sort of like the easiest, most straightforward way to do it. Um, yeah, so if you go to using data, there's something called a data cascade. And so we have a bunch of different sources that you can get data from. Uh, front matter, front matter in your layout, so you can actually set front matter and layout, and that will apply to your oh, templates as well. Interesting. Okay. Um, and then if you go up, there's like a, there's template data files, which are files that live alongside of your templates that share the same file name with a different file extension. So we have this index.md. If oh. you had an index.11dedata.js, that would also be a way you could set data. Okay. Uh, we don't want to do that here because that would only apply to one file, but you can actually do that um, on a directory as well, and it will apply to all of the templates inside of a directory. So if we go to our blog oh. folder and we make a blog dot, uh, we can just do JSON. Actually, that might be the easiest. Okay. Uh, yep. And then like layout. Yep. Uh, would be layout, layout liquid. Uh, liquid. Okay. And then I'm going to make this a little bit more obvious. Um, so we'll just add like a header. Okay. And we'll make this a main. that uh okay so that's so, like baseline I, minimal accessible um <laughs> yeah i think you want i think you, yeah i think you want to also go into those uh, blog posts and delete the layout to make sure that it's doing its thing okay so that's gone don't need that and that's gone okay and then so stop that and should start. no you shouldn't have to oh i shouldn't even need to do that no. Well, it's definitely working, which is which is awesome. Um, we don't have a main page though, so it's not doing anything just yet. Uh, yeah. But that is let's see, and then post two does what we want. Yeah, and so it's kind of the Ooh. cool thing that. Um, sorry, did you have something? I had an idea, which is okay. can I pull, like, can I pull the title out of the. The front matter in the template like will this work 
uh, rerun it and find out. <laughs> you may have like just stumbled upon exactly what I was going to say. Oh my God, this is awesome. Okay, so then that means I can go back into my post and get rid of the title part. Yeah. Okay. Nice. That's beautiful. Yeah, so so yeah, the data cascade happens independent of rendering, and so all the data is coalesced Holy before. Buckets. Did that just work? Or is like uh, merged together. Merge together before um, the uh, templates are rendered. So yeah, nice. it's kind of nice. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's super handy. Um, and it definitely does, like, I can see the appeal of this because I'm just writing, like, what I want the page to look like. I'm defining a, a document that has some metadata that can fill in my template if necessary. And things just work, which is, like, I, that makes me really happy as a dev because it's like, you know, I, I think there are a lot of really powerful solutions out there, but there's a little bit of ceremony to get up and started. And, you know, you've got a lot of like boilerplate, you've got a lot of stuff and, and boilerplates are amazing, but they're hard to parse. And that's one of the reasons why I like doing this show, like from an empty folder is like, what are we actually building? Like how much do we actually need to build to, to make this thing work? And, you know, being able to do this in what we've got three, three files that aren't content and it works. So that's pretty, that's pretty powerful stuff. Yeah. And we didn't technically need a config file yet either. For that's any true. Of this. That's just, that's just me playing. Actually, why not? Let's delete it. Let's get rid of it. Or I can make it empty mm -hmm. because we're still using yeah. liquid. And then I don't know how to test for if that. It needs to my reload. Need to... It's fast enough that I'll just do it. <laughs> Um, let's see. Any questions in the chat? What's up? Um, uh, Nikki, yeah, that was 100% my Windows notification sound. I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Things are, let's see, does it error if title is not there or gracefully omit? That's a good question. Yeah, so that's dependent on um, templating languages. I don't, Nunjux and Liquid, I think both fail. Um, or they don't fail. Um, they will just ignore uh, missing variables by default, but that's controlled by the templating languages. Okay. This, so it, it looks like it just, uh, it didn't fail. It just gave us an empty H1. Um, so it looks like it, it will still output whatever, it's like it's, it's not smart enough to know that like this whole line should disappear. But I think that's a limitation of templating languages, not of like, I, I don't know how you yeah, so do that. That's not necessarily, a I don't know if I would call that a limitation. You can put an if statement there um, to, if you want to omit certain uh, other content, if the variable doesn't exist. You, did, you um, didn't know this was going to happen, but now you have to teach me liquid. Do you know how to write a conditional? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's curly percent. If title percent curly, uh, I mean other curly, <laughs> yeah, that one. Oh, and then like and an then end if. Need... Yep. There you go. And that's the same for Nunjux and Liquid. Nice. Okay, so that means that we get in our main. Now we get no empty H one. Okay, cool. That's that's good. I'm happy. Um. So now, all right, I'm feeling good. I feel like there's probably other things that, uh, that we should know. So what else do I need to know as a, as a dev building? Yeah, so the, the next step would probably be to make an index page um, that lists all of your blog posts. Okay. And, um, and the, way, the way that 11D groups content together is not directory dependent. It has nothing to do with the file structure. Okay. Um, we use something called collections. Um, and that's all controlled in front matter as well. So um, if you go to the 11D site and look at one of the sidebar options will be collections, I believe. Yeah, working with templates, sorry, and then collections. Okay. Oh, and I forgot but, to mention also that your layout can also have another layout. You can chain layouts together. Oh, interesting. So if so, I wanted to like break it up into 
like I've got my my site layout that's got the header and stuff, but then my blog maybe has like a sidebar, or like a, a footer thing or something. I can yeah. I don't have to like duplicate the global layout. I could just have the global layout be used by the blog layout. Yep, correct. That's, that's awesome. Um, okay, so then if I want to do so, tags will do it. Yeah, so um, if you want to add uh, an item to a collection, you um, basically make a tag for it, or you add it. You add tags to your either your front matter or your data file. So we can do that actually in the blog data file. That seems that was where I was thinking. And then tag I I, was. I think it's tags. Tags, and is this going to be an array? Uh, it can be a string or an array. It will work with either. So we'll make these a blog. So now these are all blogs. And then that means I can just write this out. So if I create, like, let's, um, I guess I would, yeah, we'll call this index.md. And then I will say, Welcome to the blog. And then I can just write this template out. So let's see. for post in collections.post. Just holler if I'm so wrong the, here. No, you're doing fine. I, the thing to note about uh, liquid and nunjux is the, the little dash that comes after the after and before the percent. Uh -huh. That controls the white space around the tag. So if there's a dash there, it will actually remove any white space before the tag. And if there's a dash at the end, it will remove white space between that and the next oh, character. Oh, interesting. Okay, so if I leave this out, I would get like a UL on this line, and then this would actually be indented on its own line. But by adding these dashes, it's going to be like the UL, LI, 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 like all kind of crammed yeah. together one line. Yeah, it'll be all on one line. And so the... I don't the the example here doesn't have it, but really the nicest way you can do a loop is just to have the dash on the on the start and not the end. Okay, so can I write Markdown in here oh, inside my loop? Yeah, you can do that too. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna try. You that don't need that at all. That sounds fun. Um, so yeah. then I can do. Let's see. We'll we'll do blog data title, and it's going to link to. How would how would I do um, this? Blog data wait blog dot what is that URL I think yeah okay and then I'm going to close that with end four that looks fine to me. All right. Uh, the only I mean. other thing you're missing here is that you won't have a layout here because this exists outside of your blog folder. Oh, and right. So it doesn't have a layout set. So for now, we'll just do it manually, um, and which I guess means that I should move this up to be a title. Now we're talking. Okay. So now if I go home... That is excellent. And then I didn't put a title in this, so I just need to do that. And it should, should through the magic of hot loading, um, show up. Holy buckets. Did live. that work? It's awesome. OK, so now I get into my third <laughs> post. Damn, that was easy. Well, this is awesome. Like this is this is super powerful. Um, I can I can definitely see the appeal of this for like I want to get something on the internet. I don't want to have to like jump through a lot of hoops to do it. I would just like this site to be live, please. Um, and as far as yeah. I can tell, if I'm reading the output correctly, we're not we're not getting like boilerplate with this, right? Like we're whatever we write, that's no. what we get. Yeah, it's so it's when you make a site with Eleventy, it's impossible <laughs> for me to tell if you've made it with Eleventy based on the output, because nice. whatever you 
put into it is what comes out. Like there's no extra stuff that gets added. So my vanity is ruined by this project because I can't tell. <laughs> oh, so you I have no idea <laughs> who is using it and who isn't using it, but that's fine. Nice. Cause I think that's an, that's an important part of it too. It's cause um, I, I like the idea of just not having any extra things come out mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. And I mean, this, like, this is very, um, this seems like what, especially for, uh, for building something that like, you know, you know that you need to control everything that's coming in and out of it. You want to know what's going on at every step of the process. Um, you know, if you're, if you're working on something where you need to have really tight grip on the, the performance and the, the output, like it looks like this, this is, kind of batteries included to get started but it looks like then is there are there ways that i could tell this to like minify my html or or things like that or does that kind of become my that's my job um so we do provide hooks to perform like higher level transforms of output and those are called transforms you can find those in configuration um and basically it lets you modify the html that comes out before it gets written to disk. Um, so yeah, sorry, just configuration at the top. Um, and there'll be a section on transforms if you scroll down. I'm finding all the nice ways to improve my documentation by watching <laughs> you <laughs> um, <laughs> stumble through it here. Cool. So all right, so I can just register anything as a as a hook, which is pretty slick. Like that's really, oh, and here's the thing I was asking for. I want to minify. And so I just grab an NPM package that does that, add in a transform, check if it ends with Make HTML. Make sure that it's HTML. <laughs> nice. Yeah, this is No, awesome. this will work. This will work. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. I'm very, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did Oh, no. Blitz Jackson, the robot, has lost the party corgi emote. That's too bad. Well. <laughs> I will have to fix that. Um, okay, so now, what's next? What's another thing that we should do? Like, I, I feel like um, there, there are so many things that I'm, I know that I'm not looking at yet. So I feel like there are a, a, a bunch of different directions we could go next. Yeah, so there's a lot of different things we could do next. Um, I, I would think maybe like a small thing that people should know about is. Uh, the permalink option, which uh, which basically lets you sort of decouple where the file outputs to from where it lives, where the input, input file lives. So um, it lets you remap basically where the file goes into your output. Um, so you can actually um, change your permalink in your data cascade to be whatever you want. Uh, oh, that nice. Won't sort of remap where it goes into your output folder. Okay. So so that way, like if I wanted to take, let's say this one and put it in here, but I want this to be, so that way it'll actually get the layout so I don't need to set it anymore, but I want to make sure that it shows up at the, at the root, then I can say permalink and I would make that, what, just index that uh, HTML? Slash. Uh, maybe just slash, I think. Try that. Because I like that better. I also like that better. Okay, so it, it moved it. I'm surprised that worked. I'm going to I'm gonna restart just in case it was like caching something. Because it should it should have a recursive collection now. Give me just a second to delete this page. Or the the output, and I'm gonna make it start again. So let's do the thing. Should have created a recursive collection, huh? It did create a recursive collection. Or I guess it didn't because it's just linking to itself, not necessarily looping. Right. But. Well, I'm, su- I'm surprised that worked, but I'm delighted that it did. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, there we go. On the on the bright side, uh, you can do it wrong like I just did. <laughs> um, 
if you wanted to be safer, you could actually uh, add tags into this template and just let it be like like empty. Oh, if I and that so should I blow just said, away. Um, yeah, I think that will blow away the. No. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so well. that that is one way that we can do it. Um, probably there are better ways to solve this problem, but uh, that brings us to the next question, which is a lot of people in chat are asking for data files. Um, and we're seeing that come from, uh, it looks like everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if so we, I, I don't even know what that means. So let's let's learn. Yeah, so we can actually make, we can change... We're, I mean, we're already technically using a data file with our blog data.json. Okay. Um, but JSON is a little bit limited in, in that it can't do any like runtime processing. It's just like a static file. Mm -hmm. So you can actually change this to be a .js file. Okay. And then add a module ex module exports to just ex like export the. So if you rename this file to be a .js. And then, um, yeah, module exports equals. Okay. That should just work. And it appears that it just does, yes. Um, um, but you can also do um, function. You can export a function in here, too. So you can do, like, async stuff inside of. OK. Can I make this async? Yep, absolutely. So you can do any, at runtime, you can do like remote data fetching. You can do whatever you want in here, basically. Okay. Um, so I want, what is it, dog CEO? <laughs> let's, let's grab a random dog. <laughs> right. And we will add that at runtime. Turn. I'm gonna let prettier handle that. That's fine. Um, and so I want to let's get a result is going to be a weight. Um, does this have? This is using Node, right? So I need to get something. Yeah. I'll, so you probably need to access. use. Okay. You um, can use Node fetch or. But Node, whatever. yeah. So. Um, we're going to yarn add. I've had so much practice. Oh, don't you dare. Um, have, I need to fix my VS code because it like forgets what commands are. Well, I've never used Axios, so here we go. So, oh, good. I can teach something. Um, <laughs> this is the only one that I know. Because <laughs> I get it wrong all the time and have to like look it up. <laughs> so I have uh, basically we're just going to run a get command to get this this uh, this dog API, and then I'm going to I believe we'll get back data message. So the image will be result .data .message. and then we can say dog is image, and then. I'm going to go into a template. No, not that one. Template and say, just duplicate this. We'll say if dog, then we want to image source dog. Do I need to quote this? Um, if you don't, it won't be quoted in your output. So. Yeah. I would do it. And then the dog. And then you said to do it like this to get rid of the extra white space. Uh, no, I like to put it just always at the beginning. At the beginning. Yeah. And not at the end. Yeah. That usually works out for me. Like this? Oh, uh, no, leave that one too. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So. We have this theoretically is going to do what we want. It didn't like. Did you stop the site to install the thing? I sure did. Oh, 
Oh, I forgot no, to actually. To. No, this will work. This will work. Yes. It won't work yet. So we're going to get Axios is going to be require Axios. Now it should work. Doing things. And, and so we have a little bit of... Yeah. Look at it go. We've got... I mean, that's not a corgi, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but now if we go, any any page that we go to is going to grab a, a random dog image. And is this happening at, I guess right now, because we're serving, it's kind of. No, it, so it only runs, it only, it only will fetch those at build time. Nice, okay. So yeah, so it's gonna be the same dog on each page until I stop and restart, and then we'll get new dogs. Right, correct. And you'll see that there's actually, we actually have like a little bit of benchmarking in there, so you can see like what files are. <laughs> taking up a lot of your build time. So you can see this data file is taking nice. a lot of time because it's making our network request. Yeah, it's, well, it's making multiples. Um, well, yeah. that is freaking adorable. So yeah, all right, this is great. I could look at dog pictures all day. Um, <laughs> dog CEO, there you go. How do I invest? <laughs> okay, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, this is like, that's super powerful. And the fact that we were able to just kind of throw that together that quickly is is very, very nice. Um, is there anything else with data that you want to show off? And mm, chat, this would be your chance to, to ask if there are things that you want to see clarified. Um, dive in here. Let's see, I'm just reading through the chat to make sure there aren't. So I see... Someone asked about data files. So you, you can actually sprinkle your data files all throughout your templates like we did here. So you can make like uh, blog data.js or JSON or whatever. But we also support a global data folder as well. Okay. Um, and those will be data files that are available to all templates. Um, and that's just uh, underscore data by default at the top level. And I can I just call it whatever I want? Uh, like the, the file? file inside the data? Yeah, so the files inside of the uh, underscore data folder actually control the variables that they use uh, in the templates. Okay, so that. And then so if, if I, I make a. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I, so if I name this, that name is what becomes available? Yeah, that's, that's what the. So. Let's just go through it, I guess. <laughs> it might be easier. So if you make like a, uh, I don't know, just think of a random name. Maybe like. And then perfect. is this just like whatever I want? Yeah, you can do that, JS. Okay. So then I might just move this instead of being in the, in this part, um, which I, do, I think would make sense. Um, I can move it out here instead. And then I'm going to do, th this is going to be the same thing. So module.exports uh, async. And then we're going to, I just, re like I can just return the image, right? Return image, yep. Okay, so then I'll simplify that a little bit. All right. So now, so inside of inside I'm, of all your templates, you'll have this puppers. So you could have named it dog, and that would have been should have, have worked. I should have done without. that. <laughs> I mean, this one is a good pupper, though. Uh, okay, so that's dope. Another question: uh, People are asking about pagination. Do you want to do you want to dive into any of this before? Any any deeper into data before we uh, do pagination? Uh, I think we hit most of it. If you don't see any other questions, joining data from two sources. That's mm. yeah. So you can you can do that however you want inside of the JS file. If you want to do that manually, you can request. You can make two different network requests and combine them however you want. And if I do... so if I have like this data that I'm exporting, 
is that available in here or that's only available at the final template like could i access the the pupper value here like is there a not currently no okay um but yeah you can access this in, in the template you can return an object in your data file you can return whatever you want in there okay if you have two separate data files, how do you access it across sources? Um, it seems like the answer to that would be like if I if I needed to do this processing and then I needed to do more processing in here, that would end up getting combined into one file, right? If I needed to have access available. Is that am I correct there? Uh, say that again. Um, so, uh, so I, if I'm understanding what Dan Dan Fascia is asking in the chat, uh, it's if you have it, one data file cannot oh, access see. data from another data file. So, if that was the case, what you'd have to do is like I would almost need to I mean, like uh, yeah, you can. I mean, it, it's just JavaScript here, so you can actually uh, require a different data file if you want. Um, I mean, you couldn't do that in a JSON file, but since it's JavaScript, you can actually just like require, yeah, like what you're doing here, requiring um, the yeah. data file in a different directory and using it. So yeah, this, you can do that. this would work. Um, right. Dan, feel free to ask follow ups if you want. Otherwise, I think we're going to move on to pagination and see, see what we can do there. Getting lots of good, like just JavaScript stuff. <laughs> which is nice. Um, but yeah, so that I think, I mean, I, I'm definitely seeing the the power here because it's, I, I can see the power and I can see the confusion because it's, because it's just JavaScript, it's kind of the same hurdles that you run into with React where somebody's like, well, I don't know how to do this with React. And it's like, well, just write JavaScript. And that's a great answer if you already know JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. And, and a not great answer if you don't. So it's... Um, yeah, I think that... Uh, a lot of the hiccups that we see from from developers using 11D is um, uh, sort of misunderstandings and um, it, like edu education around what require can do. So like mm. require can, uh, you can actually, it will parse JSON for you if you require a JSON file. Um, it, it's really powerful in what require can do. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's probably a, an area of documentation improvement that we could do. <laughs> Some require primers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. I think that's like the problem with every every platform. At least every platform I've ever worked on is like figuring out how much of the rest of the internet you should document to like prep everyone for what like tools get used. Um, yeah, that was that was a huge project when I was at Gatsby. It was like, all right, well, what part of the internet are we going to document? What part aren't we going to document? And there was a ton of like, here's how like CLIs work. Here's what GraphQL is, you know, and and all this stuff that was kind of like you need this foundational knowledge if you're going to use Gatsby. But it's also a huge amount of documentation to maintain. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I think that is such a rabbit hole. We could probably talk about that all day. <laughs> and um, I would definitely love to to dive into um, this this pagination stuff because I don't even know where I would start. Sure. Yeah. So um, pagination is also, I think, maybe a contentious point for Dan because we've talked about this in the past. Um, hi, Dan. <laughs> um, so it can do a couple of different things. So. Um, what, what most people think of when they think of pagination is they think like page one, page two, page three. Right. And you can, you can use it to do that. So if you have like on your blog index, uh, you can make like a bunch of different index files based on how many blogs you have or like blog posts you have, um, one for each page of data that you want. Okay. And it, it's very good at doing that. And we could run through how to do that real quick. But the yeah, other thing that, Let's maybe do that real quick because, it, well, okay. actually, go ahead and, and explain what the other thing is, um, and then I think we should do that as well. Okay, so the other thing that pagination can do that is sort of more confusing to beginners is that it it can iterate over any data to output 
whatever you want. So it's more of like a, a way to create multiple output files from a single input file, um, which is, I think, a confusing abstraction for people, but it's also super powerful once you get it. Um, so a lot of people use it so, to fetch sort of data from a CMS. Uh, and then you can output a bunch of different um, templates from your one single CMS data request. Mm -hmm. So for example, say you're using like WordPress headless um, and you make a CMS request to get all your blog posts and it come back, comes back in a big giant JSON file or whatever. Right. Um, you can iterate over that with pagination and output a bunch of different um, HTML templates from a single data source. Gotcha. I can see why Dan argued with you over the naming of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, that, I think I might be team Dan on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we have, we have on the documentation, we have a com like a completely different section that's called create pages from data mm -hmm. that basically like has an example, but mostly just links to pagination <laughs> just to sort of like wire that up for people a little bit nice. better. But yeah. yeah, no, I mean, it's, and, and the concept is super powerful. Uh, so I want to do that, but first I just noticed something that I think is worth calling out. Um, the, the dog request that we made, uh, because we put it in puppers, it only happens once. And what that means is that wherever we go in the site, the same request is returned. So our, our call for a random dog, um, if we wanted it to be random on each page, it would need to be in this blog level or we would need to make one for each post because otherwise like this one, if I'm understanding correctly, this uh, module gets executed once per page in the folder because it's named after the folder. Uh, whereas the, the data, this gets executed once per build. Am I understanding that correctly? Yep, absolutely. You got, you nailed that right on the head. Okay. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're if you're kind of abstracting your data out. Like I was like, oh, this will do exactly the same thing, um, but it, it there was a, a slight shift in the way that it that it worked that caught me off guard. So um, yeah, for performance, global data is only um, run once per build. Awesome. Yeah, and that's that. Saying it out loud, that makes sense. It just like I had one expectation, and and it was a little different than I expected. Um, okay, so. We're going to do pa uh, pagination. Yeah, pagination is what we're going to do. So, <laughs> yep. so um, what? Like, I guess we could do this a few ways. We could we could make like a two posts per page kind of pagination setup that would let us use these three posts. Or I could also yeah. make a request to uh, like there's the the Rick and Morty API or something that would let us get like a collection of characters and we could quickly build new pages out of that. No, I think using the blog post that we have set up is probably the most straightforward thing. Okay. So yeah, let's go back into our um, index file and change that to be a pa pagination template. Okay. I don't know if you want to move that to the root or if you want to leave yeah, it here. Were you happy with that? Let's move it out to the root. That seems wise. But then I need to add my layout. All right, so okay. to make a pagination template, you um, it's again, it's configured in your front matter. I don't know if you want to go to the documentation real quick, just so you probably, can probably worth doing. See it visually. Pagination. So collections are arrays. So yeah, we can use this, but I think there is a specific uh, example of paginating a a collection on this page too, but it's just, it's very similar. Paging a collection. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So I can just put in collections.posts. And then yeah, I think ours was blog. Good call out. Um, so, all right. So I have pagination and I'm going to make this data to collections dot blog the size we'll set it to two so that we get more than one page and then for an alias 
I can just set it to blogs. And then I'm going to change this from the collections to blogs. Yep. Okay. And otherwise it's going to work exactly the same. Was that a yes? You kind of froze on me a little bit. Yeah, sorry. That was a yes. Okay. I thought you were like super impressed and surprised and you, I like rendered you speechless. <laughs> I mean, also that. Um, okay. So <laughs> it did what I wanted, but how do I get to page two? Yep. So the other confusing part is that you need to make a link to um, your pages. So okay. we need to sort of understand how to make links to other items in the in the pagination stuff. So let's go back to the documentation to find that as well. Okay. Um, let me go up to the top and look at here. So navigation links, that seems right. Pagination navigation. This is gonna slowly get longer and longer until it's a full tongue twister, right? Yeah, I I think you're about to hit like a minor hiccup with um, a mismatch in our documentation because this is, I believe, written for the next version, which you do not have installed locally. Um, let's oh, is see it, here. Is it different now? So scroll down a little more. Like I did, I did some work to sort of make this better. You know, there's a version uh, zero point ten that's coming out, so don't use anything that's zero point ten. <laughs> gotcha. So I can't use pagination dot pages yet, but soon. Yeah, I was tempted to release it <laughs> this morning, but I thought that might be, uh, I don't know, a little much. I, we we live for YOLO releases and live demos. Like, <laughs> you want to launch it right now? <laughs> I mean, let's do it. Oh, are you serious? Yes, let's 100% let's do this. All right. Let's see here. Here we go. I'm going to go just watch the version tick over. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. This is not going to end badly at all. <laughs> the chat is very excited about this. Well, they've been waiting. All right. Okay. I got to make sure I don't have any extra things in my working directory. This is going to be uh, not exciting for a little while. It's okay. So while while we're doing that, we can uh, we can play a game in the chat. So how about this, um, Phil? What do you think about doing a, a Netlify swag giveaway? We've got some T-shirts and stuff, right? I'm going to take his silence as a yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, so let's, uh, yeah, let's do it. So, uh, while we are launching 11D 0.10, I am going to do a giveaway and that requires me to log into Streamlabs. So give me just a second. And while I do that, um, yeah, we're going to give away a, a t-shirt. So, um, just keep your eyes on the chat because it's going to, that's what I needed. All right, two factor, two factor off. Um, all right, so we're gonna do a giveaway, and our giveaway happens over here. I have a new giveaway. I'm gonna add a giveaway for something custom. It's going to be a Netlify T-shirt, and we're gonna run this for the next ten minutes. So. For the next 10 minutes, um, you can win a uh, Netlify t-shirt. And if you are a sub, you will get an extra, like a bonus entry. So, um, 
it's now active and you can enter by hitting uh yeah we can throw in some stickers with that t-shirt phil uh that's a great idea so yeah it, you can enter by just typing um you just got bliss let me get here netlify t-shirt i'm gonna make it netlify t-shirt and stickers Okay, so that's saved and it is started. So this is uh, this is now running. You can now win a uh, a Netlify stuff, Netlify swag. Um, so yeah, hit that hit that raffle to get in. Um, how's it going over there, Zach? Almost done. If you hear an airplane, like an airplane taking off, that's my computer running the unit tests. <laughs> If we see it start to like hover in front of you, yeah. Oh man, this is great. I'm uh, so this is exciting. This is the first time on the show that we've done a live release. Um, very, I'm very on board with this. Um, so what else is new for uh, chat? Tell me how your how's your holiday? What did what did you do for New Year's? What what kind of good stuff did we have? What was the best thing you ate over the holiday break? Uh, Phil, yeah, I'm totally gonna I'm totally gonna update the local site. We'll just we'll pull the latest version of 11D and, and roll. All right, it should be published now. I so Brian went to to sleep at 9:30. I 100% did not make it to midnight. We had people over at our house, like we had like 15 people in the house, and I got to like 11, and I was like. Uh, no, not gonna do. I just went to bed. <laughs> left all the people in the house. Lemon sauce turkey, all the cheese. Oh my god, this is all amazing. Uh, Eco, nothing needed to be fixed. We just wanted to use a feature in in zero point ten, so we're we're just launching it so that we can use it. <laughs> all right, oh, the new version Momo is Verde. technically oh my god technically up, but the release notes aren't there yet. Okay, release notes aren't there yet, but we can see that. But you can, you should be able to install it. I can install it. Yeah, you, so it's on npm right now. Yarn global add eleven d uh, latest. Oh come on! I'm so sick of VS Code not remembering where my stuff is. Oh wait, no, it's eleven d eleven d. Is that right? Uh, yep. Okay. I don't know why I just didn't have you install the beta because we have a beta. <laughs> we have a beta version. You know what? This is so much more exciting. <laughs> oh wow. Um. Let's see. Orange sauce turkey. Oh man, I shouldn't have asked about food. I'm hungry. <laughs> Biscuits and gravy. Here we go. 11D at 0 0.10. All it's right, so live, y'all. We did a we did it live. So let's you... everything did what we wanted. Can you check the version? Oh, it's right there. Okay, yeah. It's output. Okay, cool. Here we go. Oh, I hope, we're, hope we're I didn't business. screw that up. <laughs> no, this is this is wonderful. So um okay. So now we should be able to use this uh, this pagination, um, which means that I get pagination dot pages. Yeah, and so there should be just a very you should be able to copy and paste one of these examples. So yeah, go. Um, Where was it? I I feel like I was looking right at it and then I got lost. I think it's further down. Further down. Nope, previous and next links here page key and okay even though it says don't copy this code do it anyway so we're going to write for page key in pagination.pages and then we will href pagination hrefs and 
what's uh, what's the loop thing? Loop dot index zero. Let me yeah, let me see here. Oh yeah, something's up with the there's a loop in here. Pagination pages will be the keys. Test data page keys. Yeah, so, oh. so we're making. So basically, we're making uh, uh, an index of all of the the pages in our pagination, which we don't necessarily need to do for this. We just need to make next and previous here. So. Um, okay. So I was let's ignore that part. So if I wanted to. Now, now I'm trying to wrap my head around it. So, so what I'm understanding is that if we were to do like blogs, yeah. So you want? No, key. sorry. Delete all of this. No, no delete just, all. Just, of this. Get, just get it. Just stop it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, um. So yeah, here's what you. Here's what you want. Okay. So yeah. So let's do uh, a link tag. Just uh, sorry, yep, A or href, and then inside of the quotes, you'll want pagination dot. Uh, yep, you're doing all right. Pagination dot href dot previous. Like that. Yep, and that will be a link to the previous page. Okay. And then you might be able to guess what the next page is. Okay, and then I assume I can do like a if pagination dot href dot previous. Correct. I would also assume that. <laughs> and then we'll just end if. Okay. And I will copy this over. I think you're missing a curly at the end. Oh, yeah, sure am. Okay, so let's try that. Head over here. And we get our next page. Now we got a previous page. Look at that. So then I'm going to change this down <laughs> and let's make it one post per page. And so now, something shorted out there. But. Um, so, yeah, so when you change pagination from being a single from being one a chunk of one um, is like a special case so you don't have to it's not it's no longer an array so blogs is no longer a thing gotcha so okay so so, so one change it is to not size of one work. no yeah it'll work change it to size of one okay uh, and then your alias would be blog since it's just one uh, and then you would just yeah delete that delete your for loop yep I don't know if that will actually delete it from the template, but because it's non and you're using an HTML comment there, but. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. All right, fine. So we'll just delete it then. Okay, so that's post one. So we get our next, and then this one's got previous and next pages, and then this one only has previous. So that's doing what we wanted. All right. So then I'm going to undo what I just did there. And take this back to two. Uh, you want to change your alias to blogs. There we go. All right. So, I mean, this is beautiful. I feel like this is art. We've, uh, this is clearly the best website I've ever built. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, what uh, what else should we what else should we cover here? Oh, we were gonna do something from from data, right? Oh uh, yeah, we can. Okay, so if we want to do that, imagine a data set. You could just make a you could make a JSON file of your own choosing, or you could use something from an API too. Yeah, um, let's do. So the Rick and Morty API is really easy, so we can just do a quick call there, um, and that'll give us. This one, um, 
grab any character. I think we can just like throw in a right. Yeah, so this will give us info next and then results. So I can go in here and we'll say characters.js and this is going to be module.exports and we'll make this an async function um, and we're also going to include axios so we'll get result will be uh, axios.get okay and so in here we can say that the characters will be result data. Wish I could make that. There's a way to make this easier. Let me look at the network tab, try that again. So we get this back, response, preview. There we go. So it's going to be result.data.results, and that's an array. So that actually should be what we return and then in here I think you want uh i think you have to await something right oh yeah i gotta await this good call okay so now each character like we're gonna get an array set as uh characters and yep. in characters we're gonna get uh, each one will have ID name, et cetera, et cetera. So we can maybe just make a a page. Let's so let's do this. Let's create a a new set of pages under as like characters slash one slash two whatever, um, and just show their okay. names. Does that seem? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um. So to do that, I need something. I would just do it like this. Did you freeze? Okay, here we am go. I, am I frozen? Pagination. You're back. And we want data would be characters. Um, is that what happens? Size, whoops. Let's say size is gonna be 10 and Do I need an alias or can I just use characters? Uh, an alias makes it a lot better. Otherwise, it's, you have to like use like pagination dot items, and it's weird. Oh, I got you. Um, okay, so I assume I can't just do that because it would collide. Hmm. That's a good question. Let's. Yeah, I would probably do some bad things. I wouldn't use like the it. same thing there. So we'll just we'll do a we'll do a short version. And then did I need anything else? I need a layout. So we'll go layout is layout.liquid. That seems reasonable. And then in here, I think I can pull a lot of this. So we'll just put the, the characters here. Yeah, it's basically the same template. Okay, so now this part is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be the name. Yeah, and it probably won't be uh, .data either because that was uh, collection specific. Oh. So this is just going to be like the raw, okay. the raw now, data that comes back from the service. How would I do what so I right now you're like... making. <clears throat> so right now you're making an index page that will show all of the different character names. If you wanted to make a character page for each character that we're fetching uh -huh. then you would use pagination with the size of one and we can do that first if you want to do that yes i do because that do that kind of demos the and then you would change alias to character okay um, so i want that and then i'm going to need to do like let's see it's not going to set a title so i can set that to character.name 
and then we can set the image here. So we'll do character.name and we get back an image which is just image. And that seems like it's enough. Um, and then I need to get rid of that because that's broken. Okay, so I've done that. This didn't like. You may have saved at some point. Okay, let me see if this. Oh, wait. Yeah, that worked. So it created our characters. We got our first 20. And now if I go back here to, what was it? Characters. Uh, characters, characters, I think. Okay. So now we've got our pages going in, and I need to override. Oh, wait. Can I make this, like, false to make it? Yeah, I think in YAML, no and false are the same thing, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course they are. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, so let's see. We're we're coming up on time here. So a couple questions in the in the chat, just to make sure. Um, does Eleven D have a concept of menus or or tables of contents, or is that kind of like a thing you have to roll your own? We have a navigation. Want to do like Markdown specific table? You can use. Markdown parser. So, um, any of the Markdown IT plugins that are out there that are available. Now we have a separate like 11D navigation plugin that um, if you scroll, there's like a plugins. Yep, right there on the left. Here. And navigation. Okay, so that one will help you with navigation. Um, and then we can just use like whatever markdown we wanted. We would just kind of talk. So is this built on like remark or what's what's your markdown parsing language or your processor? Yeah. So T. Uh, I don't know why, but I'm having a lot of trouble with your data connection right now. Is that me? Okay. Yeah, it seems like you're back now. So, you, what what was your your parser? Markdown IT. Okay. And so, if Which I uses Common Mark. Got it. And so, if I'm if I'm going into like make a plugin, then theoretically, I can just kind of I can read some of the the source here to figure out how they work. But I could I could just kind of put whatever I want into. Um, yeah, so so eleven E plugins are basically um very simply they're just um basically a way to make your own configuration file that people can import. Okay. So you basically get anything that's available in configuration you can you can make a plugin for. Nice. Because it's 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 just an extension of configuration. Okay. Cool. So um maybe the the last thing that we should do is let's get um I want to put a list of these characters. I want to make this page like slash characters um, that shows. Oh, that yeah, one shows I think zero. maybe. I think really quick we should probably make a permalink for these so we don't have weird like integer integers in our URL. That would be cool. That's pretty easy. Uh, you can just type right in this uh, colon. Yeah, there. Uh, you froze up on me again. We, hmm. Yeah, we might. Um... Hello, hello. Yeah, it's. I. Uh, it might be honestly. You hackers! Yeah. You you dirty hackers! I don't know that. It, it, maybe it's hackers. Um. But <laughs> yeah. So I think. Um. This also just might be a sign that we are we are at time and we should start tearing down here. So, um, <laughs> it, so if I, I want to add, a, well, let's let's try it. So I want to add a. Can I? I can't just add a permalink, can I? Yep. I can. Yes, you can do that. Yep. And how do I set it? 
Um, so you would do slash characters slash like this. Uh, you can do that, yeah. Or can I? Do I get to leave it out? No, if you want to use variables in there. So we do actually do uh, template parsing inside of permalink. So you you can use any. Um, this is a liquid file, I think. You can use any liquid syntax inside of here. Okay. So yeah, you, know how you can to use turn... character dot name. Okay, so if I do character dot name, the problem is going to be that they have uh, spaces and stuff. Is there a way to like? Yeah. So just um, for that, you would use we include something by default called a URL slug, mm -hmm. and that's just a filter um, that we provide. And so you can do a bar, whatever that like straight up and down bar is, and then just uh, slug. I think. This is gonna make and you might want to put quotes around this um, oh, just for you know, safety, YAML oh. safety. YAML safety. That's we all need a little YAML safety. Yeah. All right. Uh, so now there we go. So we should be. Uh, you might want a trailing slash there too in your permalink because otherwise it will. Uh, be confused about whether or not it should make it a directory or a extensionless file. Problem writing. Uh, I would cancel this and just rerun it. Okay. I think slash thing. Oh, I know what it is. It's because it um, it created the the folders. So let me just delete because it, it, I think it created those as like straight files. And then we tried to write into folders that were actually oh, files. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yep. There yeah. we go. Okay. So that, uh, I thought that was going to be hard, and it wasn't. So that was pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I think I, uh, at, at, so next steps, like things that, that we would want to do next, uh, we're, we're out of time, so we got to kind of shut it down here. But Next steps would be like diving into uh, building the the page out of the characters, which it looks like we would just be creating another page with a bigger pagination size and creating a, a list of links for that. Um, we could set the permalink to yep. slash characters. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't see anything else in the in the chat, but let's see who our winner is. Uh, and Muleman, Nikki, you are the winner of our Netlify t-shirt and stickers. So, um, I will connect with you offline. We'll get you the, uh, the details. Um, and you know what, because y'all were troopers today, I'm going to pick a second winner. So let's do this. We're going to get Boanok. You are also a winner. So we will, um, we will get both of you hooked up with, uh, with some, some swag. So, um, awesome. Yeah. Zach, where should people find you online? Uh, I'm Zach Lead on Twitter, ZachLead.com. Uh, 11e.dev is our website. Uh, it's that. with an H. Yep, thanks. Okay, and we've got 11e.dev, which was back here. Um, I, this is, so this is super fun. This looks like something that's going to be really, really useful for getting things up and running quickly, having a lot of flexibility in terms of what we want to do with it. Um, chat as always, thank you so much for coming in. Um, and definitely stay tuned because we've got some fun stuff coming up later this week. We have, uh, we, let's see, here's click the button. Did I break my, did I break my, oh, I'm hitting the wrong button is why. So uh, yeah, later this week, we've got Nick DeJesus. He's going to come on and teach us how to do um, Stripe subscriptions on websites. I'm super excited about this one. Nick is amazing. He's also like a professional Tekken player. So I'm going to have lots of questions for him about that. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then we've got Eli Fitch coming on. We're going to do some uh, custom maps and animation. Then we've got Angie Jones. She's going to teach us about Cypress and visual testing, which is two things that I know very little about. So I'm really, really excited for that one. Um, Zach Gordon's going to come on. Uh, Gift is going to come on and teach us about Gridsome. So we've got so, so much good content coming up 
uh, and even more that I haven't had a chance to get on the website yet. So definitely come out here. We added a calendar now. So if you want to get, uh, where is it? It's um, jason.af slash LWJ calendar. Um, that will actually put all of the dates into your calendar so you can set reminders and stuff if you want. Uh, it's automatically updated, so that way you don't have to come check the website. You'll just know. Uh, with that being said, um, Zach, any any parting words? No, I really enjoyed being on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on. This was, this was really great. Um, chat, stay tuned. We're going to raid. Zach, thanks again, and we will see you next time. See ya.